Good morning, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer, T3Live.com, and Class B member, T3 Trading Group. Today is Tuesday morning, November 6th. It's Election Day here in the United States. Hope everybody gets out there to exercise their right to vote. Uh, as far as getting into the market, we're going to start off a little bit differently today with a weekly chart as opposed to starting out with the daily chart of the spiders. The point that I want to bring up here is you can very clearly see here now with the election coming up, the last two weeks have been inside weeks so far. And if you follow uh, my commentary, I am usually talking about contraction leading to volatility, volatility leading to contraction. And we had a decent move down from 148 to 141, uh, basically September to end of October. And now we've had two weeks of inside trading. So essentially what that means is we are seeing price action consolidate as it was completely to be expected with the election coming up. But here's the key that um, you need to be aware of as a trader uh, when you read the tape or set up price action scenarios. When you get conditions of consolidation and you break out of that consolidation, more often than not, you get pretty solid trends. So what you should be looking to set up here is if the market gives us intraday continuation patterns outside of this two-week consolidation, inside week, inside week, you should be in trend trading mode, which means holding your positions a little longer, give them a little bit more room because you're in a trend trading mode, and even possibly if the market and your individual stocks are on the same page, take multiple positions. So really the point that I'm trying to bring up here is consolidation over the market over the last two weeks now should be leading to a trend, a little bit of clarity after the election's over, and we start to pick a tradable direction. Now the market actually has held up relatively well all things considered, if we zoom out here to the daily charts, now we did push down and we're holding below the 50 EMA, the 21 and the um, and the 8 on the daily. However, during this interim area, we've had some very important large cap stocks get, for lack of a better way of putting it, get clobbered. You know, Google, Apple, we're going to take a look at all those guys and the market has held up relatively well. Now, does that mean it would, in my opinion, we're going to break out to the upside. No. As a trader, I'm going to let the market tip its hand, and then I'm going to jump on board for the ride. That That's really about as simple as that. So how does that translate into trades? Well, as a trader, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, you want to start to see clarity or price persistency in the direction of your idea so you can trade with conviction. Trading with conviction means that you will hold your winners because you have a reason to hold your winners. As far as the market is concerned, and specifically the SPY here, we're not seeing that as of right now. Now, it's, it's impressive that we didn't come in harder. However, we had what we had, what we call, uh, whether you want to call them dojis or whatnot, I, I, I essentially call them melted candles. Melted candles means a small body which represents indecision. If it closed relatively close to where it opened, there's indecision. Now, you can make a case that you pushed off the lows, those are bullish, and that's why you got this pop here. Maybe, but what I'm seeing here is three days of indecision, buying, selling, and buying again. There's not a lack of clarity. So it's very, very important that you realize right now the market is not in a confirmed uptrend or downtrend right now. It's, it's As a matter of fact, we've made one, two, three, four lower, lo lower highs right now, in addition to one, two, three lower lows. So we are kind of neutral in the market right now. So what, what does that have to do with the morning call? That has everything to do with the morning call because you should know your trade expectation for how long you plan on holding a trade and how much conviction you should have prior to the day starting, prior to initiating the trade. So how does that translate into the market opens and you're going to, make an, you're going to put something on? It essentially means if the expectation for follow through is lower based on a market analysis of what I just covered, it means that you should not be looking to aggressively build positions intraday or maybe even overnight because the edge is not there from the market perspective. Okay, now that doesn't mean you can't have individual stocks that perform well. We're going to cover a couple of them now, but let's let's finish up with the um, the spiders and the Dow before we, uh, excuse me the Nasdaq and the uh, the Dow. So you can see the Nasdaq is a little bit weaker than the spiders. The Nasdaq is in a much cleaner downtrend. It still has the support just below here from the 200 EMA and if we go to the Dow, which just basically just keeps floating around the 13,000 level 
and we've been there for a while. That looks a lot more similar to, to the spider. So, again, if you strip the moving averages out of there, we're basically in a trading range. Okay, Let, let's say we, we wipe out this little window here. We are essentially in a range from the beginning of August to November. So the fact that we popped out of that range and came right back in, this is the real range. It's essentially 13,000 to 13,300. All right, so how does that affect us as far as setting up trades? Neutral. Boom. You put it on your game plan sheet. You say the market is neutral right now until we get out of this one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down, indecision, open where it closed. Until we get out of that, market is neutral. I'm not going to say confirmed uptrend, downtrend, let IBD and other people do all that. Right now, there's no edge, long or short. Okay? So let's go to Apple. Something very interesting in Apple yesterday is we mentioned both in the morning call and in the recap that the 200 EMA on the daily chart has now come in as a significant support level. So what does that mean? Well, what did we just say about the weekly chart of the spiders? Inside day. Inside day leads to contraction, uh, is contraction. Contraction normally will lead to volatility. So we have two different things going on in Apple right now. Support, very cleanly hit at 575.35 in the 200 EMA and an inside day. So you put those two things together, you could be looking today, as Scott said, we'll let the mar let Apple itself tell us when it's ready to go. Holding support and having an inside day could be the day that we get a little bit of buying above yesterday's high. So if you have yesterday's high on your radar in Apple, yesterday's high was 587.77. It's actually trading just a little bit above that right now. It's about a dollar ten above that right now. So if we open higher, pull back, yesterday's high would be the support level that you're going to be looking for to bid into in Apple. Another interesting one this morning that is in play is Netflix. Okay, it's actually trading down just a little bit this morning. However, Icon, not Icon, whatever you want to call it, high style bid being uh, protected. Do you read last night on um, whatever service you look at? Uh, it's still holding from the move off of the 5750 level. Yes, it was a monster move, but it is pretty much consolidating this move within a window between 75 and 80, right at the 200. So, one of the classic textbook things you want to see to expect to move higher is when a stock has a significant move, pushes up to what might be perceived as a resistance level, and flags or pauses at that level on lighter volume, the odds of a move continuing through that level are pretty good. So, if you zoom down to the bottom of the chart here, that you can see that the volume, obviously this is monster volume, but the volume has been decreasing during this flag, so that is constructive price action to look for Netflix to get above and clear that 80 level. Now, another one that's been, actually two stocks I'm going to mention here that haven't been in play a while. Uh, first one is RIM. We've been mentioning RIM, and the best way to look at this one is on the weekly charts. You can clearly see here that this 850 level was the level it had to get above for anything significant to happen. And now, so far, we have two weeks in a row with uh, last week, obviously, a very solid week of buying, closed well above the open, and so far today, we're still staying above that 850 level. Another interesting one is Bank of America. Pop that one up there real quick. Pretty clean chart here, guys. I mean, we had a pretty good push down earlier in the year, and then we had a nice higher low, double bottom, and really really good clean price action between seven dollars and nine seventy five and now we're kind of flirting around this ten dollars and you can see so far this week we have an inside week but here's the point that I want to make it's very important to have your alarm set at significant levels so that if a price reaches an area you are aware of it even if it's not a stock you happen to be trading that day so you can clearly see here this ten dollar level zooming out a little bit more this is a very significant level that you need to be aware of if you're trading some of these stocks and you want to pick up a stock that Maybe it doesn't have the same volatility of, let's say, a Goldman Sachs or something like that, but you want to be involved in the sector, whether or not it's a day trade or a longer-term swing trade slash position trade. Bank of America is at a pretty exciting level right now to at least be giving it consideration. All right, next, CMG. Obviously, stock got hit pretty good on earnings. Slow drift high right now, right? Well, guess what? Today, it got upgraded by Bank of America. Speaking of Bank of America... Now, does that mean you just jump in there and start buying it because it got upgraded? No. It's actually still got a long way to go here to fill the gap. It's up around 2 to $2.5 right now pre-market. Now, you, again, you need to know, and I talk about this all the time, you need to know if you are a news trader or a technical trader. You can make a combination of the both, but if you're just a news trader trading the catalyst like a momentum trader would do, 
more often than not, it's a faster trade and you have to make quick decisions. So if you're going to trade off the upgrade, just know that it's, it's not the same trade as just trading off the charts. When significant news comes out, the charts are usually out the window. If you're a technical trader who uses news as a catalyst, then that means that you have to wait intraday for some significant levels to form to trade off of those levels. Now we have Visa and MasterCard this morning as well. If I had a choice between the two, you can see Visa popped through this 143 level and MasterCard showing relative weakness from that. So if I had a choice between the two, I like this two-day pullback. Topping tail there, pretty decent tail, but you got some moving averages below here. I like a lower opening to neutral opening in the first half an hour looking for some support to bid. Next we have Yahoo. Really clean move up to the upside. Yahoo doesn't have a really big uh, intraday trading range. We get a lot of volatility, but again, take a look at what we're looking here. Stocks finally clearing some levels. Let's actually go to where it was trading to. And now it's actually above the 200 on the weekly as well. And it looks like just under 19 is the next level. So you got a couple of dollars, uh, give or take, to look for the next level in Yahoo. Now, this is a very clean move to the upside. Now, put this in perspective, though. The stock has just traded from, let's say, 15.75 to just over 17.36. Okay? That's not a huge move from percentage wise. But what are the odds of buying a higher opening in a stock that has gapped up and has now closed higher one, two, three, four, five days in a row? The better idea, and this is again, this is setting up your trade expectation, game planning your ideas for the day, is waiting for the stock to pull back after it's gone this many days in a row and looking for a spot to bid as opposed to being the person who is selling who might have been long up into this area. So you have to have in your mind some sort of structure of if the stock goes down so many days in a row, what are the odds of selling short a lower opening? If a stock goes up seven, you know, four, five, six days in a row, what are the odds of following through if I buy higher opening? So in this instance here, the insinuation I'm making or the implication that is in my game plan is when it's up that many days in a row, I like it long, but I like it long in a pullback as opposed to the breakout. Home builders, we can buzz through these guys real quick, showing some really good relative strength. And again, I think you can see these a little bit cleaner on the weekly charts. We have Lenar, KBH, two inside, again, this pattern starting to form here all over the place, two inside weeks in a row here in KBH, look for some volatility there. Pulte Homes, all of them, and there's another two weeks there, trading at the highs, flagging at the highs, decreasing volume at the highs, look for higher prices here. Next we have Amazon, not rolling over once it held that support on the 200 on the daily, and looking like, you know what, almost the same price four days in a row. If I draw a line across here, okay, so we're closing at relative one, two, three, basically four days in a row at very, very similar price. This stock is setting up, let me just zoom this out a little bit here. We had one or two bad ticks in there that messed the chart up a little bit, but here's what I'm looking at right now. I know Scott would be proud of me drawing these little pennant here. That's what I'm looking at right now. Okay, we have a consolidation, big range on good volume. Okay, starts to consolidate. We're looking for trend out of this window. So I do like Amazon for a little volatility. Going over to stuff that might have a little bit less volatility, but a clean trend, big gap, nice flag. I like Kohl's up at these levels as well. And you can see here on the weekly, we're actually approaching new 2012 highs. My mom must be really happy about that, or my mom's shopping, one or the other. Getting into the financials, I know we talk about Goldman and Citigroup a lot the last couple of days, Morgan Stanley, some relative strength. However, Look at STT, and let's go out to this. You can probably see a little better on the daily chart. Nice pop here uh, about two weeks ago. Consolidated very nicely at 44.50. Another nice push to the upside. We do have some resistance coming up here, though. So two, so two sides to the trade. Again, I like the long, but when you look at the long and you look at 47 as resistance, a higher opening in this stock is not a good reward to risk potential. How much reward is available for the risk you have to take? Not the best idea in a higher opening. Maybe a lower opening increases the reward potential to justify the risk, but STT looks pretty good there. If you're trading on, uh, actually, let's go to one more, and then we'll go to the short side. CVS actually had good earnings this morning. It's actually trading up 47.49. They raised their guidance, so it's actually up in this area here. And again, though, exactly what we just talked about, about the reward potential. It's going to open up right around here, 47.50, or at least that's where it's trading right now. If it opens here and pushes higher right out of the gate, you're probably looking at a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So again, getting back to setting your alarms, it's imperative you set an alarm at in the stock at 49. You want to be alerted prior to it pushing through it so you can make a decision if the tape is printing well on the offer to look to get involved through that level. If you like the short side, 
we do have a couple of laggards here. You can probably see this a little bit better on the daily charts. Walmart, DuPont, DD, and I think the best of these particular short sales is NOV with room to go. All right, so a few stocks on the short side, majority of the stocks on the long side. Election day, get out there, exercise your right to be able to place that vote. Don't talk politics at the office. Not a good thing to do. Go vote in private and have a great trading day today, everybody.